So what I would like first is a volunteer for a safe, simple, okay, please come. Now this is going to be the first top 10 basic skill. How do you do? Good, how are you? I'm Dr. Heath. Tell me your name. Shereen Doshi. Okay, very nice to meet you. So would I be um, able to touch your back? Okay. Uh, please have you stand in this way with your back toward the audience. Now, <clears throat> even with the clothing, what I'm going to do is have the landmarks identified. And you're going to be able to do this on your own when you're doing this participation. And what you'll do is you'll come in on those iliac crests. So you first will come in and get the waistline and then get on top of this iliac crest bony landmark, okay? That's your iliac crest height. Then you're going to come up to the inferior angle of the scapula and you're going to assess the asymmetry, high or low, right to left. And what do you see here? What's your observation? She's high on the right, okay? Now what we want to do is educate, first of all, the, N the MD, but certainly the DO to refresh them, that there's, first of all, asymmetry that's important to us. It's not immaterial. That's an education to them. So part of our demonstration of these basic skills is a way for them to understand better what we're doing anyway and how important it is for us to know some of these asymmetries that seem at first glance immaterial and dismissed but important to us. So as we come up now to the shoulder we have an elevation on the right and then we can come into the mastoid we see an elevation on the right and we begin to now understand that there may be asymmetries and there may be compensations and there may be weight-bearing differences that actually may accompany some of her challenge in her health status and perhaps even in symptoms, okay? So that's your structural examination. It's as simple as that. If they have an idea how simple it is, then perhaps, first of all, the efficiency can be done. It's not intimidating. But when the students can incorporate it into their physical examination and document it, then we begin to have now the body of evidence that is necessary for us to now move forward with clinical application. All right, now we can also take a look sideways. We can look at AP curves. We can look at expected curves. We can look at the expected thoracic kyphosis, which is flattened. We can look at the lumbar expected lordosis, which is flattened. And we begin to see that if she has an impact from the ground up, that it may actually locate or localize problems right here in the neck. Now, I didn't ask your symptoms. Low back pain. Low back pain. Well, we could, we could understand that now, couldn't we? All right, now if I look for the PSIS, and I have, genes are not the best, but, mm -hmm. If I find that PSIS and then I have you bend forward and then come on back, first of all, how many of you, ex and I should have it go this way, PSIS, uh, bend forward but don't smack your head, okay? And what do you see? Do it one more time so I'm not in the way. One more time, okay? What do you see? Where does it rise? Did anybody see? Oh, right side, but you already kind of knew that. You already knew that. You already knew with this unlevelness, high on the right, that the chances of it riding high on the PSIS flexion test is going to be pretty good, and you're just confirming it. But what it tells you is it gives you a whole diagnosis on an axis of rotation of that sacrum. Now you begin to understand further, where's your back pain? On the right. Okay, I believe that. I believe that. I have findings and she has a complaint. That's a good diagnosis. I like that. 